since healthcare came up there, we'll uh, we'll go down to healthcare. Then we have one foreign affairs uh, question after that. But we'll start with Peter Panetti. Um Probably safe to say, maybe by a show of hands, real fast. Uh, if uh, you were elected to the Senate, would you vote to repeal or do away with Obamacare? Amen. Everybody on the panel. Okay, that's pretty unsurprising. We'll repeal. A lot of Republican candidates and incumbents say we're against Obamacare. Some already voted against it. But then what? If you're a Republican and you're campaigning and people say, what about me then? What would be uh, your policy? What should the federal government do when it comes to health care issues? Uh, we'll start with Peter Panetti. The federal government should do nothing whatsoever. The federal government's a problem. When I look at my little constitution, there's nothing in Article 1, Section 8 that says the government should have anything whatsoever to do with um, the health care of the nation. Uh, if you look at the history, the federal government destroys anything that it touches. Health care is no different than anything else that it touches. <coughs> my solution would be um, different. First, we have to introduce free market principles. Everything the free market touches, conversely, is efficient. And it always gets better. I was talking to someone earlier about computers. When I first started computer work, we had computers that took probably as long as this table. And it had a fraction of the processing power. It only had like five megabytes of memory and 100,000 characters of uh, five megabytes of uh, disk space and 100,000 uh, characters on it. Well, now, you know, we have a desktop computer that has much, much more than that, and it's a fraction of the cost. Same thing happens in healthcare. With healthcare, with the free market system, you have millions of individuals throughout the nation always looking at the problems of healthcare, coming up with better ways to solve the problems of people. The government destroys that initiative. So that's the first thing. We have to introduce free market principles. The other thing right now is that we have to allow people to purchase insurance across state lines. Right now we're looking to purchase insurance for the state lines. <coughs> We have to go through and we have to allow people to pay for their own health care. If I buy milk right now, I always buy the cheapest milk I can find. Um, hopefully it's a 219 or thereabouts. Sometimes it's a little more expensive. Right now, if someone goes in for an operation or for prescriptions or whatever, the insurance company pays for it. There's no incentive whatsoever to check costs, and the insurance company or the government pays as much money as you know, is needed. We have to address tort reform, because right now I watch my television every night and I see commercials, if you've taken this drug, contact this law firm, and we'll sue on your behalf and yeah. get some sort of medical benefit. You have to go through and make sure that loser pays. Those are just a few suggestions. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> what, uh, what, should, uh, what, what would your policy be, the government's policy in dealing with health care issues? I think one of the things we should realize is some of the things that Obamacare does call for. First of all, it calls for all Christian hospitals to pay for abortions, and hand out cards Second, they've already started asking you as a taxpayer to pay for abortion. I'm part of pro-life, and I'm completely against the government getting involved in these, these areas. Um, as far as um, Obamacare is concerned, I don't care if it's Obamacare or, or medical care, or I don't care, I don't care what you call it, but the point is that this program is a state right issue has no business at the federal government whatsoever. This is something for the states to decide whether they want it or they don't want it. And how could the states administer it? What could the states do? First of all, I'm a free enterprise person. I look at the fact that capitalism is the way this country was founded and how capitalism got a bad name. You know, I don't know one of the candidates said that he doesn't want this country being turned over to you know, a socialist country. I maintain it's already a socialist country. We're already at the state with so many social issues and so many social <coughs> programs that it beckons the call that we've lost all of our freedom. So with Obamacare, there's a couple things that you can do versus you could go back to making it a, a system that people can compete and people can compete for prices. If you go into a, a doctor's office right now and you ask how much setting your arm would be, they won't give you a price. They just tell you, wait till you get the bill. If you ask for the designation codes on it, they won't give you the designation codes either. So you don't know if they code it wrong or right. You gotta get competition back into the workplace. And I guarantee you, prices will go down and you get better care. Uh, yes. 
Scotty, again, if not Obamacare, what would your policy be, a federal government policy be toward health care issues? Well, I could sit here and repeat everything Peter Connecticut said, but instead of that, I'll just add to it. Um, well, we have to get from here to there. And he described a free market where the government doesn't have a role in health care, and I agree with that. Now, how do we get from here to there? For one thing, this didn't start with Obamacare. He didn't invent um, the American variant on socialized medicine. We have Medicare, we have Medicaid. These are all still government administrated or in some way facilitated health plans. So, and so this is, in a way, these help set the stage for Obamacare by causing much of the damage <coughs> to the system that we have now. So just as we were kind of led along a little string transitioning here, and some have suggested Obamacare is a transition into single payer. We got to get out of this. And we we can't just do it overnight. So some of the things we can do, um, I would suggest, is in order to get that market motive going, is that any of these people currently getting um, money through Medicare, or Medicaid, because um, those are still going to be there at first um, with the repeal of Obamacare, which actually hasn't really done too much yet. Um, anyone getting that must post their prices online and must charge everyone. Whatever the service is, you can care about it. They can charge whatever they want. But wherever they're charging, they don't make a deal here where well, we can charge you this and you that. And that's how they do it right now. Just whatever the price is, that's the price. And otherwise, they don't even get included in the program. We need to, um, obviously, one thing was mentioned here also, that the federal government has absolutely no business um, subsidizing abortions. That's obscene. The, um, but then, as far as the competition thing goes, if we get people involved in the marketplace, if we, and, and federal government should stop telling insurance companies, oh, you can offer this plan or this plan or this plan. No, none of those templates. Let people pick what plan they want. And um, that would alone get things moving a little further. And of course, the press big line. Thank you. Just like a lot of other government programs, Obamacare's purpose is to restrict your freedom. And it also threatens our lives, not only from rationing, the threat of rationing, but I mean, who would have thought in our lifetimes of a country in the 21st century with Britain and Canada as good examples of what not to do, socializing our health care system. If you need a doctor now, you can find one. If you need a procedure in Canada or Britain, you might be put on a waiting list for six months. And a lot of people die on waiting lists. We as Americans should not have our freedom taken away to get the best quality medical care we can at a price we agree to because of some government regulation. Because if we take away our freedom, it might mean we're taking away our lives or members of our family. Now, I mentioned to you 16 years ago as a county commissioner, I developed a medical savings account plan. They invited me to testify before Congress. Let me explain to you real quick, if you don't know how that works, by comparison, here's how most Americans get their insurance today, but let's look at a grocery store. You go in the grocery store and you got a $100 deductible for food insurance with an 80-20 copay for everything you buy past the deductible. You go in the door, don't you want to buy your way through that first $100 of food real fast, whether you need it or not, so you can get to the free food faster? Or at least free insofar as you're only going to pay 20 cents on the dollar because somebody, the government or the insurance company, your employer, pays the other 80%. And when you get past the deductible and it's free, do you then care what a jug of milk or a loaf of bread costs? <coughs> do you? And what does the guy in the grocery store who owns it know? If he knows you as a consumer don't care what it costs, what's he do to the price? Is this rocket science, folks? Medical savings accounts like we did in our county, we gave it to the employee, we gave them a high catastrophic policy with a much higher deductible, but the premium was so much lower, we could give them the cash that made up the difference and still have more money left over for the taxpayer, and we told them whatever they didn't spend in their medical savings account, they could keep tax-free, roll over, we'd give them another check the next year. All of a sudden, they're caring what health care costs, and when we as American consumers care what something costs, it forces those who provide the good or service to bring down the price in order to get our business. That's what we ought to do for American health care. Our only um, foreign affairs. Oh, uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, 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 o
You know, there's an advantage to going last on some of these things because you can just say, I basically agree with what has been said. Uh, it is true. You know, I think there's a, a, a great idea that we could do, that we should require all members of Congress to have health savings accounts. In addition, I think that we should adjust their pay. You know, we should have we should have merit pay for our, our congressmen and senators. <coughs> they can balance the budget. They get full pay. To the degree they can't, they should get less pay. There ought to be some incentive in this. They get paid the same $170,000 a year, whether they do good or not. What do you think of that? Does that make sense to you? Yes, All right, good. But let me just say that to the one area that we haven't spent a lot of time talking about, I agree again with the market forces, we got to bring them in, the HSA, tort reform, I'm all for those things. But Medicaid, that is the, the, the care for the poor. And uh, again, it's, it's the, the, the federal government sends incredible amounts of money to each state for medical care for the poor. It's part of the welfare system's means-tested welfare. The fastest growing federal budget item in the last 20 years has been means-tested welfare. It's not been Social Security, Medicare, it's not been defense, it's means-tested welfare. And a big part of that is this Medicaid thing. And it comes with major strings attached from the federal government that, that holds the, binds the hands of our, of our state. I totally agree, it's not, it should not be a federal thing, but the reality is it is right now. We may need to make a transition. And I would suggest to you that it needs to be block granted to be brought to the state so the state can make its own decisions and do a better job just as a transition sort of thing. But ultimately, and I'm going to get time, I only got 10 more seconds at this one, but I'm going to talk about my plan for reforming welfare in a significant way. I said earlier, it's the tie that doesn't fit. What are we going to transition it to? We can't let people die in the cold. But that's where we as individuals, that's where churches and nonprofits and so on can stand on our hind feet and meet the needs in a real compassionate way. We need to make that change. Thank you.